the message. And obviously, if you think of poetry in the Arabian culture, it was so much important. Poetry is, was at that time even more influential than any medium of communication today. More influential than television, newspapers, radio, or the internet, or all of them combined. Why? Because if someone would like to say, for example, that if you want to raise a person or a group, they will actually create a poem which will be transmitted by all the Arabs because the Arabs were known so much for their own love of poetry and their strong ability to memorize. And therefore, it will be going just like fire spreading in hay. And it will be spreading all over, almost in no time. So there was a need for this. And even writing, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was not himself a writer, as we know he was illiterate. He did not write, nor did he read. Only he was able to be taught the glorious Quran, to memorize it in his own heart, to keep it, and to deliver it and convey it. Yet he had his own writers, those who were writing the glorious Quran to keep it and preserve it. And later on, he had these people who were writing to all the kings and emperors of his own world. He was actually asking these writers to write to these emperors to convey the message of Islam. And we know he um, wrote to the Persian emperor, to the Roman, to the Abyssinians. He wrote to the emperor of Egypt and all of those that were around him at that time. So we know that it is so important to convey the message, and that's what the Prophet, peace be upon him, did. And even when he was meeting with people, he always advised them to convey the message. He said, for example, Anyone who's present shall convey the message to those who are not present. And he said, even regarding the glorious Quran, which is the message of God, which has to be conveyed, he said, Convey from me even one verse from the Quran. Even one verse that you can convey to some other people was something required. And in his final sermon on the Hajj, the only Hajj that he made on the day of Arafah, where he said, Have I delivered the message? Have I conveyed the message? And they, of course, said, Yes, O Messenger of Allah, you have delivered and you have conveyed. Then he said, You have to convey this message. Those who are present shall convey it to those who are not here. And he said, O oh Allah, be my own witness that I have delivered the message because it was, in fact, sort of an end to his own message because it was the only hajj that he made. And immediately, four months after that, the Prophet, peace be upon him, died. Then is it required of all Muslims to deliver the message of Islam? Are we required to convey the message just like the Prophet ﷺ did? Well, the scholars of Islam will tell you that, yes, indeed, there shall be a group that is designated to deliver the message of Islam to everyone else. And the evidence for this is coming from the glorious Quran. Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the glorious Quran, وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ ويأمرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر وأولئك هم المفلحون. There shall be from among you a group that will be enjoining what is good, forbidding what is evil, and they are indeed the successful. So there has to be a certain group, and this is an obligation upon the whole ummah, the whole nation of Islam. They have to deliver the message. They have to convey this to all others. And... For every Muslim calling upon the path of Islam is mandatory based on their knowledge and their ability. No one is immune from this if they have the knowledge 
and the ability because the Prophet peace be upon him said بَلِّغُوا عَنِّي وَلَوْ آيَةً Convey from me even one verse. So if you have that verse, you have to convey it. Now you cannot, obviously, no one would say that everyone has to be marvelous in communication. They have to master all the means of communication. They have to be either anchors on television, writers or editors of newspapers, someone who writes their own blogs on computer, or have their own websites. This is not the idea. This is not what is meant by communicating. But somehow, you have to be involved in the work of da'wah. And da'wah does not mean that we have to employ only mass communication. We have to employ all possible means of communication. Even one-on-one, -on -one, one to one communication is a sort of da'wah. Interpersonal communication is a form of da'wah. Group communication, where lectures and group discussions and uh, seminars and workshops come and fall into this category of delivering the message of Islam, and we call this da'wah. And if you take the mass media, obviously, people who conduct themselves in the mass media have to be qualified and trained to do so. But even we can go one step further into what we call intercultural communication. Those who are able to communicate to people from other cultures, from other religions, and who can speak other languages and have the ability to present Islam in the best of light as it was revealed upon the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him.